live from a bedroom in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's a 200 episode special starring Frosty Bros and featuring Frosty Bros. And some special guest stars will be coming out to say hello to everyone out there at YouTube and Frosty Bros. So here he is, Frosty Bros. Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Look at that! Parte 200 subscriber special! Oh yeah! Yeah, I finally reached the landmark 200 subscriber special. Yep. I've got her. Finally got that 200 mark. Very happy about it. Thank you all who have subscribed to me, who got me up to 200. Thank you all for watching my videos and commenting and liking. And to the people that dislike my videos, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Obviously, I have more likes than dislikes. So, <laughs> sit right back. Who are we going to have first? Um, oh, hey, over there. <laughs> It's an alien! Hey, oh, what's up, alien? <laughs> oh, so you're one of those people that dislike my videos, huh? What do you think about my videos? Really? Well, then you can just go to hell and you can go bye-bye. Now I'm back. Alright, the first part of my special, I am going to showcase pre- my systems that I own that are before the video game crash of 1983, before Nintendo and Japan took over the video game market of the world, when video games were made here in the great old U.S. of A. So sit right back and check out my collection. Take it away, Frosty Bros. Hey, y'all. Frosty Bros here. Uh... The last rubber er, safety piece off my headset finally broke off. Oh. Ah, all right. Okay. This video is going to be a collection of my pre-Nintendo systems. That's right. That crap we played before the video game crash of 1983. All right. Where do I start? Where do I start? Let's start with. Okay. Let's go with the handhelds first, because I do got a couple classic handhelds here. I got two of the 1978 Mattel handhelds. I have basketball, and these are the 1978 versions there. And I have hockey. I don't know how many of these were made, but I wouldn't mind having the whole collection of these because it'd be kind of cool. And then we have I, the th stickers missing off the back, or the metal. It actually had a little metal plate. I want to say this is 70. I want to say it was 78 also. Atari wants you to. Touch it! The Atari Touch Me, which actually, I don't have a battery in here, but it plays just like Simon. It's just a generic version of Simon. But that was kind of a neat find when I found it. I mean, you can tell how old they are when they still take 9 volts, I, th I guess. But alright, so now for the consoles. Let's go with a very beat up but still works Coleco Telstar. That's right, I have a Pong system. It is cracked right here. Um, missing the battery cover. Matter of fact, it was missing the other thing too. My friend actually wired this thing onto it. And the right controller is a little finicky, but it still plays pretty well. I wouldn't mind having a couple more of these systems if I found them cheap enough. Then we have the Coleco. Telstar Marksman. This thing is tiny, but it's really cool. Too bad the sound does not work. When I first bought it, I had to disconnect the sound because when I turned it on, all I got was a loud eee as it was running. And the left controller, it, I don't know if there's any way to fix these. If anybody knows on how, on how to fix this, then let me know because this the uh, left controller is very, very touchy. I mean, like, you move it just a little bit, she, like, flies up and down the screen like this. But the cool thing about this 
is this. I forgot to unwrap this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Has a gun game in it. Check that bad boy out for a gun for a video game. Oh, it gets better. It gets way better. Now this is a gun. <laughs> now this is a gun for a video game. Check that bad boy out. Let's get the little aimer there and everything. That'd be cool if they made guns like this for video game systems again, but I don't think the law will allow it. <laughs> it was kind of cool that I found all that. I forget how much it was. Then, we have the Atari 2600. I have the four switch wood green. Oh yeah, the classic wood green. Wish I had more wood green systems, but this is the only one I actually have. Um, this works perfect. Works nice. So I got a Atari 2600 there. We have the Odyssey 2. Unfortunately, controllers are hardwired and it's missing one. So if anybody's got a broken Odyssey I can get a controller off you with, I will definitely pay for the shipping and pay for the controller. Otherwise, you know what sucks too is for one player games, it's what's dumb is the system actually half the games play, one player games are with the right stick, and the other half that I have play with the left stick. But, oh well, what are you going to do? And then, this is my newest thing that I have here. Uh, this is the newest of the classic systems I have. If I can get it out here. And that is... Get in there. Well, the Intellivision 2. And you just saw that I got some more games for it. But this is the television I own. Why is this not cooperating with me? Really? Freaking really. Are you freaking kidding me here? Alright, there we go. The television 2. I finally tested it out. It actually, with the Nintendo hookup that came with it, it is does not look good at all. It looks like crap. So I'm going to have to find a different way to hook this thing up to the TV. Alright. And last but not least, we have the Atari 7800 Super System. Sorry, Pro System, not Super System. This one actually works really well. I got... Well, what's cool about this, too, is it's backwards compatible, so all you need to do is hook this up, and then you can play Atari 2600 and Atari 7800 games with that system. And I just remember something that I, oh, that I just found in the closet the other day. And it is one of the most bizarre things. I don't think anybody... Re if anybody remembers this thing, they will have to let me know. It is... The Coleco from 1978. The Coleco Quiz Whiz. And yes, the computer answering game with program cartridge. It actually is. I don't want to lose any of their stuff here. This is the system. It plugs in to question books that are pre programmed. And then that is the cartridge. I also have. I got this a long time ago off of eBay for really, really dirt cheap. But I have the. So it's 101 Questions, which is the first book that came with it. And then I do have number two, Cartridge, which is 101 Questions on the World of Sports. There you go. The Quiz Whiz. Just carry this around with you and challenge people. And that's pretty much it. So... Yeah, those are my pre-Nintendo systems. Oh, I just wrecked the box here. Pre-Nintendo systems. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you have that's pre-Nintendo. Let me know if anybody remembers this damn thing. I'm not getting rid of this. This is just too cool that I have it in the box. And I do have a complete. I do have Coleco Toys and Games. I had a Telstar Coloration. There's a Telstar Marksman right there. 
head-to-head -head electronic footballs. A little genius. Hey, I used to have that too. A little genius right there. Huh. Alright. There you go. Anyways, enjoy. Ah, uh, Frosty Bros out. Hello, I just wanted to say congratulations, Frosty Bros, for reaching his 200 subscribers and keep up the good work. And Frosty Bros is back again. Let's talk Nintendo. I just want to do this quickly in my special here for 200 subscribers. This is all the room I have for Nintendo. I am completely out of room for Nintendo games. I have 213. I mean, I do have some reprodu or homebrews and some reproductions. I have two homebrews like that one. I don't know where Battle Kid went. And I have this reproduction, which is the uh, Donkey Kong Arcade series from RetroZone, RetroUSB.com. It's basically called Donkey Kong Pie Foundry. It actually adds in the fourth level that was left out of the Donkey Kong games. It's basically Donkey Kong with the added level. But as you can see, I mean, I got games back there. I got more box games. And some of them I have box tricks for. I didn't buy them all because some of them I really beat the crap. And I really don't feel like spending money like that Super Spring. Because there's a big chunk missing right there. What's the point of protecting a box that's that destroyed? I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll get, get them all in box protectors. And yeah, there's a California Raisin in here. And zipples that I don't use. I'm garbage pill kids. Um, like, you can see there that it's beat up. The Castlevania 2 one, it's missing both the, um, uh, how do you explain it? It's missing both of these. So, and then, as you can guess, there it is. Maybe I'll do another collection video of these one of these days, but right now I'm just showing you, like, for all you guys who watch my channel and all the channels that I watch and all the people that are on YouTube and got back into collecting, when you were a kid, did you ever think you would own this many freaking Nintendo games or any for any system this many? I probably, when I was a kid, this starting here, going up here, this stack here was probably the most I ever owned total when I was a kid. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. I think maybe before I got rid of my Nintendo back in the day when I was younger, I think maybe I had like a total of like 25, maybe 30 games tops. And they're all the games that I loved. Like a lot of them were Konami games like these, Contra, Life Force, Track and Field, uh, Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt. Yeah, whatever. And I never thought I would ever own this many games. I mean, I don't have nothing really, really rare. I think the rarest game I own is the newest one that I got, which is the Rainbow Islands here. That's probably the rarest game I own. Box games, probably the best one I have is Kirby's Adventure, but it, it does not have the booklet. And then I still have this weird Famicom multi-game cart. Doesn't tell me how many games are on it. I have no way to play it. To test it out. This weird white thing only works in the one of those Yobo systems. It'll play in the FC3 Plus and not the FC3 Twin, though. Oh, what's the system it came with? It worked. I think the system was called Factor 5. And it played nothing but Nintendo games. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, wow. If anybody else would like to comment or make a video response of, like, holy crap, can't believe I own this many now. If I had that many as a kid, when I was in grade school slash middle school, I would have been king shit back then, man. Everybody would have. Wanted to come over and play games. I mean, I own a lot of bunch of shitty games, obviously. I mean, we have, uh, right off the top of my head, um, the Rocketeer is not that good. Um, actually, this was not even worth the money. The Super Nintendo one was a lot more fun. This one was kind of stupid that I got the year before. So I, I'm not going to be buying those again this year. Matter of fact, um, Retro USB kind of pissed me off because they, a lot of their repos they got rid of. They discontinued them. They're no longer making them. I don't know if they didn't just didn't sell that good. But I wanted to get Kid Dracula, but I didn't, and now I can't. Um, yeah, so, so that is the Nintendo collection. I'll do a more in-depth collection one of these days. It's going to be a long video because it's a lot of games to go through. 213 now, thanks to Finding Rainbow Islands there. So, yeah, um, 
Done with that and back to Frosty Bros. And I'm back. This part of the special. Two zero zero subscriber special. I'm gonna talk about two dilemmas I have for collecting classic video games. First dilemma. Super Nintendo. These damn dust sleeves. They're nice to have to protect your games from not getting dust in them. But if you have them on every single one of your games, they're eventually going to keep going like this and start falling down. If you stack them this way, you eventually run out of room because these things are so much fatter. So the dilemma I have is, do I keep these stupid plastic things to keep the dust out that are really kind of handy and nice? Or just stack them like this so I have more room, they stack better. You can even stack them like this and they'll just keep piling up on top of each other without falling over. Put this back on, you'll have less room and all that other fun stuff. Probably one of the dumbest things any company has ever done or any for any system is Atari 26 freaking hundred. We all know what an Atari 2600 game looks like. But then you have these freaking stupid companies like Data Age that comes up with this weird cartridge. And then you've got the Milton, or I don't know what company makes these, Mattel, that makes these weird ass cartridges. With just one little label there, so if that label falls off, you don't know what it is, like an Intellivision game. Then you have Parker Brothers that has these kind of shaped cartridges. And then you have these weird oddball fucking things like this from US Games. Stacking these all up sucks. <laughs> For collecting wise, I guess if I could stack them this way, if I had more room, it'd make it a lot easier. But other than that, it sucks trying to like stack them on top of each other because there's so many oddly shaped cartridges that you can't. Like here, like I have them like that. Now, if I could go the other way, if I had more room, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But not everybody has all the room in the world to stack games like that. So, what am I on? I'm on something here. Something rolled underneath there. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So that is my little little rant for the special here on collecting games. Some games are. It's one good thing about if you're if you're like PlayStation One and up, or even Genesis. At least Genesis all come in the same size box almost. See if it's cardboard or plastic. Any disc systems are usually in CD cases or DVD cases, uh, unless you're a collector of, like, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, and 3DO. I know 3DO has got one of the hugest boxes, because it's a giant cardboard thing wrapped around the little tiny disc. But anyways, that is my little rant for that, for the special. hope everybody's enjoying the special so far. And we'll go with the kitty. Look, it's a kitty. Yeah. All right, back again. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there for the heck of it. Um. All right, so let's end this special with a little update of what I want to do. I've got a PC game collection video coming up. Like I said earlier in this special, or what Frosty Bro said in the special. I will eventually get to doing a uh, Nintendo 2, because I have 213 games, but I don't know if I should I split it up. Should I just do one long freaking video? Um, in real life, I do swear. I know on my videos I barely swear, because I'm kind of keeping it like, kid-friendly, but... You know, that's not who I am, so if I do start swearing more in my videos, that's just who I really am, so... I guess deal with it or hopefully it doesn't offend anybody because I do swear a lot not a lot a lot I'm not like I'm not like from like I'm not a sailor <laughs> um I do want to do um something that's not gaming related I do have a bunch of weird crap in my fridge a bunch of weird shit and some weird other things like inspired by Screaming Mantis I found this Johnny Bootlegger Machine Gun Melon. I'm gonna start doing. Well, I'm gonna do one video and see how it bowls over with the crowd that watches my stuff. A Frosty Bowls drinks weird shit video. So that's planned in the works. Um, yeah, and then I'll just keep up with the game pickups videos and stuff like that. Um, 
so yes thank you all for all the hard for watching my videos commenting all the people that are still friends with me and helping me get to 2013 still making videos here 200 subscribers I know it took a lot longer than most people do to get to 200 subscribers, but you know what? I decided to have fun with this little special. I can't afford to like, give, do a contest or anything, but oh, oh yeah, and I got a questions and answer video I want to do. I just got to write down the questions and think about it a little bit longer. But we'll do one question right now, a prequel, if you will, a preview of the question video. If you could only have one game for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, what would those games be? I already have my answer. Genesis would be Herzog fucking Swee, man. Or in German too, I guess. Um for Super Nintendo, that would be I can't get it out, would be Act Razor. And for Nintendo, of course, Contra. Those are the three games. If I can only have one game for for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, that's what they would be. Herzog's Wii. Contra and Act Razor. So there's one question out of the way. If you guys want to comment on that question, please do. I would appreciate even a video response congratulating me or, you know, doing that one question. And then when I get to the video, going, why am I moving all over? Ah, I'm just fucking psycho, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just getting weird now. So I'm going to end this special. Thank you all for 200 subscribers, for commenting, watching and generally enjoying what I put out there. It's not the best. I don't have everything that everybody else does, but oh well. I can't do video game plays because I want to just film the TV screen. I think that if I had a way to capture video like a DVD-R player or something, I would do it that way. But um, all right. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully, Hoping for 200 more subscribers, more videos. Yes. So this is Frost Bros saying thank you all very much.